Hello, subs <clears throat> Hello subscribers and unsubscribers, and welcome back to Chaos Head. Uh, I do want to go and mention that, or uh, well, I do want to first actually apologize that I haven't uploaded this in a couple weeks. Uh, but I'm trying to work on a new uploading schedule that will hopefully make it easier for me to actually upload all of my main stuff every week. That So that includes Chaos Head. Uh, I make no guarantee that I'll be able to actually keep to this schedule, but the idea is that I will hopefully record, um, on Monday I'll try to record, in it stands right now, Dawn of War and Chaos Head. Wednesday I'll try to record Star Trek Online and Tom Clancy's End of War. As I said, hopefully this will make it so that I can actually upload all of my primary main series every week. But let's go ahead and actually load up the game. Start the timer. So basically, that was how I got into a tiff with a Holden Caulfield type girl in real life. You prick. Now you've really got me PO'd. Pissed off. You know, Lord Nightheart, you say you aren't interested in 3D girls, but haven't you been getting along with all kinds of 3D girls lately? You said before that one of them barged into your house. No matter how I look at it, that's totally an arrow situation. You're really, or you've really hit your stride with the ladies. Okay, listen up. I'll acknowledge that I have more opportunities to talk to cute chicks. But look. Every single one of them, a mental patient. You try being on the receiving end of their crazy talk. I'll tell... Okay. I'll telling you? Probably should be I'm telling you. It's a real life horror. Sorry, man. Don't worry about it. Oh, damn it. Okay. I think I might have skipped something, so let's see, even after I returned home, the thing Senna had told me nagged at me. I don't know if that's what I ended up skipping, because I, I think I skipped something on accident there. I didn't think they were true naturally, but it shouldn't, or, but it shouldn't take more than a little investigating to determine whether the parts about the patient and the presidential order were real or fake. Uh-huh. Okay. That's... It's not easy to read when it's like that because it's all spaced out. Which is why with Grim as my backup, I soon began running some searches. I researched with the help of one of Grim's acquaintances, who is currently an American resident. Meh. But it doesn't... But it wasn't like we were going to find anything. Nowadays, you can't believe any anyone without a good source. Shio contacted me. Shio is Grimm's aforementioned online friend. He lived in America and was fluent in English. It's nonsense, right? That psycho bitch. She must have been making a fool out of me, thinking I wouldn't know English anyhow. Don't underestimate the net. Uh, here endeth the <laughs> lesson. <laughs> it exists. It exists? What did? He went out his way to translate it. For now, I'll upload it. You're going to troll me again. You have no faith in me. Then again, that's because I'm usually up to no good. So, oh. should I invite Shiho here? Oh. Okay, so he actually spoke this time. Grim had tricked me all the time up till now. 
If I trusted him like usual here, I'd end up seeing something mind-breakingly nasty. But he had a source, and he was even saying he'd invite Shiho. If you're trolling me again, I'm going to kick you out of the guild. Okay, but believe me, just this once. How very self-confident. It might be okay to trust him this time around. <laughs> Heart beating a little faster, I clicked the link while narrowing my eyes to keep from seeing anything clearly all at once. It was a document written in English with a strange diagram below it. In the middle of the diagram was drawn something resembling a human face. Ah, uh, well, a human, not necessarily just a human face. The headline was United States Patent. Patent must mean the same thing as I, oh, what, Tokyo or something like that? I got no idea. In other words, this was America no Tokyo. It really existed. Next, I opened one of the two attached text files. Therein was a translation of some news that had touched on the subject of this patent. The Psychological Psychology Research Laboratory of America's Victor. Chondria University, which is currently active in research, has come up with a groundbreaking invention called VR, Visual Rebuilding Technology. As it was undertaken with healthcare in mind, this research has drawn the attention of blind people throughout the world. It is a landmark invention that allows even those who have been blind since birth to see what lies around them via the use of filming devices such as video cameras. To provide a simple explanation of the technology involved in this, the signals composing the images of the scenery recorded by the video camera are converted to action potentials. The one type of electrical signal that the brain is capable of recognizing. They then are connected to the optic nerve which continu continues to the brain. It has already met with success in tests, but they have also acquired a patent. The things Senna told me hadn't simply been adolescent delusions. I gulped and opened the other text file. American government White House announcement issued on March 27th, 1997. The strengthening of protections against classified human experimentation. No organization may conduct classified experiments on human subjects, nor may they support such efforts in the absence of informed consent. This order takes effect on March 27th, 1998, or if the legislative process permits before that date. President of the United States, William J. Clinton. An executive order from the American President. Its contents were the kind of thing you'd expect to see in a movie. I hadn't imagined even this would be part of reality. I tried following the linked URL just in case. Even I can read English text. In spite of my appearance, I'm way smarter than those slackers who attend school every day. But the contents actually written there were indeed the same as the translated text. Senna's words reverberated at the back of my head. It was a pretty difficult subject to process, but what Sana had told me and the online sources that backed her up made my spine go cold. I had the feeling that something fearsome was hiding in there. What concerned me more than anything else, Senna's intentions in deliberately saying these things to me. Did it have anything to do with me? Frankly, the part about being able to control people's free will didn't merely seem like someone else's problem. Because there remained the possibility that I was a sleepwalker. 
It seemed that on the day of the third Nugent incident, the staking, I had gone to At Cafe and posted in the chat as Shogun, though I remembered nothing of it. Besides, I didn't have any memory of Rimi. Apparently, she was a friend I'd been classmates with for over a year, and whom I'd hung out with countless times, but she didn't exist in my memory. What if I had behaved like that while being manipulated from outside by someone else? For starters, there was no way I'd be able to become close to a cute girl like Rimi, given how bad I was at talking to 3D girls. No, you're overthinking it. At least, the part about the chat was purely you as fantasy. Shogun existed separately, and all he'd done was try to entrap me. Setting aside the matter of whether his real identity was the elderly man who had appeared in front of the 107 building in a wheelchair, what if Senna too were an associate of Shogun? Maybe she was attempting to mislead me. Don't swallow it without a grain of salt. Don't believe a suspicious and unfamiliar girl like her. Senna and Yua were birds of a feather. It'll be okay this way, right, Sera? The post-awakening Sera looked at me sorrowfully. She must be worried sick about me. Okay, so that was the end of essentially that chapter. The only sound reverberating through the room was that of someone tapping at a keyboard. Uh, Kusunoki Yua's slim, lift fingers moved as though dancing. Her gaze was constantly fixed on the monitor. She touch-typed calmly, making few typos. She was writing an email. In addition, it was a rather long one. Yu had already spent close to 30 minutes thinking of her message and polishing it as she went on writing. Her fingers stopped moving without warning. She let out a small sigh of distress and abruptly held back the backspace key. The cursor blinking on the monitor scrolled along as it sped its way toward the left side of the screen. The long composition she had been writing up until now vanished in the blink of an eye, together with the cursor's movement. When all the texts had at least been erased, Yua picked up the stuffed Tagero froggy, set on her bed, and hugged it to her chest. This had become a habit of hers as of late. If she weren't embracing something like this, she would grow unbearably anxious. <sighs> Burying her chin in the stuffed animal, Yua simultaneously sighed again and gave a little shake of her head. <laughs> Yu's expression was strained as she murmured quietly to no one in particular. With the stuffed animal resting atop, atop her knees, she returned her hands to the keyboard. One after another, the monitor displayed the characters she typed with, a graceful, with graceful gestures. When she had written that far, Yu's hands paused. It was exceedingly short and simple compared to the text she had previously erased. After some hesitation, Yua went ahead and clicked the send icon. <laughs> the email finished sending without giving her a chance to stop it. Yua embraced the Garo froggy on her knees again, harder. From then on, she continued staring at her monitor for over an hour. Though she hadn't expected much of an answer from the recipient, there was absolutely no indication that one was coming. The usual room 37, and as I sank my hips into its reclining chair, I chewed on my nails to distract myself from my irritation. There was a reason I had come to that cafe yesterday and today in succession. The night of the day before yesterday, after I found out from Grimm's investigation that Senna had been telling me the truth, I got an email from Yua. Plus, she was presumptuous enough to mention that she wanted to talk with me one more time. Don't fuck around with me. I'd like to see her. Her. Oh, I'd, li I'd like to say to her. What's with me saying I want to talk with you after deceiving me? There's nothing you could possibly have to tell me. 
Anyway, she must have come up with a new plan to entrap me or something. I'm not going to play along with her. Yes, I wasn't used to conversing with girls. As a result, I'd been totally taken in when you had made a play for me. Seeing me like that, she'd been secretly mocking me. And then there were her incomprehensible delusions. I have plenty of delusions myself, but mine don't cause any inconvenience to other people. But she'd regurgitated her theories at me in a way that almost made it seem like I was the new gen criminal. I'd never forgive her. And so I'd ignore her email. But one thing still concerned me. In the email, you had written that she was going to my base. Indeed, she did know my address. Which is why I'd taken refuge in that cafe, even though today wasn't a school-going day for me. If possible, I'd have liked to bring my D-sword for good luck, but unlike Senna, I didn't have the guts to walk around the shopping district carrying it with me. All that aside, it was pretty tiring to spend almost half the day at a net cafe. The reclining seat was comfortable and the store interior even came equipped with showers, but I certainly couldn't make myself feel, a, feel as at home as in my base. Besides, the biggest problem was Sarah's absence. Spending these past two days shut up in a at cafe had really made me see just how vital Sarah's existence was to me. I wanted to return to my base fast, but I had decided to go home late at night after one day changed to the next. By that time, the last train would have run, and I didn't think even Yua would be lying in wait for me. I had another four hours to kill before midnight. It'd go by quickly if I played Ensu, but I shifted my gaze to the PC monitor. My secondary character. Dr. Lisalot was standing there with nothing to do. I recalled Senna's words. Over half of what she had said was a fact. Except, we hadn't been able to find a source for the part about controlling people's free will and physical movements. Maybe that aspect of it was purely in Senna's head. Because mixing the truth with truth with a tiny bit of lie was a particularly skillful and effective method by which to threaten someone. Though I understood that, with my reason, the un unexplainable phenomena that had occurred to me over these past few weeks kept flittering across my brain, and they remained terrifying no matter what I did. I absentmindedly contemplated the slot inside the screen. <laughs> I muttered in a soft voice so as to keep anyone nearby from hearing me. I had pondered something similar before. The world that I was currently looking at, Lisalot's world, Basilod, may have been the real thing to Lisalot, but to me it was artificial. This suggested that the world I'm in, which the person behind me gazed at, was also something artificial. However, in the same way the least lot couldn't recognize me, a higher order being, I too failed to recognize the higher order being who was the person behind me. I wondered if least lot was thinking the same kind of thing as me. At least, without my intervention, she wouldn't even be able to move under her own power. Then what about me? Would I even be able to rise from this reclining seat if the person behind me chose not to intervene? I tried standing up. I met with immediate success. This time I tried sitting down. No problem. This sequence of movements, were they the product of my own will? Or were they the result of the interference of the person behind me? I had no way to determine which was which and... <laughs> The door that set apart this private room was opening. I heard it at my back. I simultaneously sensed someone enter. Startled, I turned. Gusunoki Yua. I was about to cry out in dread. But Yua's hand sealed my mouth. That hand of hers was feverishly, feverishly hot, and my nose picked up on the scent of her sweat. Stop. 
出さないって約束して約束してくれるよねしないなんて言わないよね約束してするでしょするのあお願い<笑> Do what? The small private room you have blocked off my escape route.、Uh, I think we chose green before. I think. I'm gonna go with red. What's the worst that could happen? Before I knew it, you had pressed down on my shoulders with stunning strength, and I couldn't get up from my chair either. Yua's gaze pierced me coldly at point blank range. When I averted my eyes, unable to endure it, I saw the three g a r o t froggies attached to the bag hanging from her shoulder. <laughs> Yua slowly lifted her hand away. As soon as I tried to shout, she covered my mouth again. It was hard to breathe. Uh, I made no such promise.、ね、no, never promised you anything. You had an abnormally strong grip. At the same time that she sealed my mouth, she clenched my jaw until it creaked. My terror reached its zenith, and my knees started shivering. All I could do was desperately nod in answer to Yua's quiet, emotionless words. At that, Yua finally relaxed her grip on my jaw, but she didn't take her hand away like before. Shit, she was a genuine stalker. I'd never dreamed she would show up here. Um. 180. When Yua whispered in a low voice, as though to keep anyone nearby from hearing, her tone had reverted to its usual timidity. Er. Yeah, I guess. It was like she had multiple personalities. She was seriously ill. Her expression was truly apologetic, so much so that it almost made me start to feel guilty. She was quite the actress. If you understand that much, please don't have anything to do with me anymore. I don't have anything to discuss with a subordinate of Shogun. It's evil of you to entrap a weakling like me. What was she saying? Well, I would say she's saying something that almost sounds like she's gonna kill you. She spoke as if she knew everything there was to know about me. Though all the time I had spent with her wouldn't even fill 24 hours. What about, or what about me does she claim to understand? More of those ridiculous delusions she had such a talent for? In my horror, I thrashed out with my arms and legs. Even then, Yua wouldn't let go of me. At this rate, I wouldn't be able to stop her from killing me. Had Shogun given up on tricking me and sent Yua over to assassinate me? I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Okay. Yeah, Yua, you're a little freaky. You know that? 
話はすすぐ終わりますから。Although her tone of voice was feeble, the strength in her hands as they held me down was so great that I couldn't budge even if I tried to resist. I couldn't believe how much power those thin hands were capable of producing. Yu's face was steadily approaching me. I frantically turned my face aside. Suddenly, I noticed Yu's hands were trembling. No, either that, or had my own trembling simply passed into her hands? As I puzzled over this, outrageous words fell from Yu's lips. Of what? Pity colored Yu's eyes. Though she had started without movement at. What? Though she had stared without movement at me until then, she abruptly lowered her gaze. BIT. Tajo j i n k a k u n a t i s Ah, that's. I have multiple personalities, you say? Indifferent to my bafflement, Yua continued speaking. In the depths of her glasses, Yua's eyes once again settled on me. They made it look as if she were appealing to me. That attitude of hers, which appeared to be one of concern for me no matter how I looked at it, made my bones freeze. Her delusions were going out of control. The things she was saying totally contradicted each other. Really? Was it really self contradictory? I didn't understand myself very well. I'd posted in chats under the handle of Shogun without knowing it. Though I had no recollection of it, at some point I'd become friends with a girl named Rimi.、Uh, wasn't a. uh. what? Somnambulist? I. I guess sleepwalker? I think I searched that up before in a different part.、Uh, I'm not gonna bother looking it up though. There is no higher order existence manipulating me. Maybe the person behind me had literally been inside my heart. A me who wasn't me. A personality that wasn't me. Multiple personalities. My head ached, a piercing pain as if someone were stabbing my temples. It couldn't be. That scenario is pure nonsense. Who would believe such a thing? This too was used fantasy. She was my enemy. She got in my way. She tried to fool me. She tried to break my heart. And Shogun had influence over the hospital. Dr. Takashi, the one person I could rely on, had gone away all too suddenly and unnaturally. Shogun must have erased him. I'd get a race too if I listened to you and went there with her. I won't believe her. Won't believe what? Won't believe her, won't believe her, won't believe her, won't believe her, yada yada yada. I was in a trance. I shoved you away with all my strength. <laughs> Slamming into the wooden dividing door, 
Close behind her, you were slid to the floor, face twisting. <laughs> Having finally freed myself from Yua's hands, I grabbed my bag, stepped over her, and went out into the corridor. Mate. Crouching, Yua seized my ankle. Her hair was disheveled, and she made no effort to adjust her sliding down glasses. And as she clung desperately to me, that form of hers invoked nothing but fear in me. A pathetic shriek leaked from my mouth. <coughs> she was my enemy. She worked under Shogun. I won't let you fool me. I'll never let you fool me again. <coughs> when I yelled, you immediately let go of me. I took advantage of that gap to dash out of the store. Faced with the flabbergasted clerk at the front desk, I whipped out a 5,000 yen, or I whipped a 5,000 yen bill out of my pocket and threw it down on the counter. I got in the elevator leading outside without waiting to take my change. I burst out of the elevator, tumbling my way outside. Okay, and the time just went off. Hmm. I think I'll play just a little bit longer. The sun already was setting. I looked around. There were a lot of people. Run away. For the time being, run away is somewhere. It was dangerous to go back to my base. She chased after me. I went on running without any idea of where to head. When I thought that even now, you um might descend from a different elevator and come to threaten me with that cold voice of hers. I became unable to stay there for so much as a second. <laughs> anyway, looking over my shoulder countless times, I ran. The pedestrians were in my way. I bumped into salary men and high school girls with a delinquent air about them. They bitched at me every time. Even so, I went on running, unable to stop. I could hardly breathe. I'd picked random roads as I escaped, and I didn't have a very good idea of where I was running to. I paused to clutch my breathing. I checked the view from the place where I was standing. This was in front of Maruichi. Alright, then I'll treat to Miyashita Park. I take a brief break there, then flee even further away. If I'd made it to Yoyogi Park, there'd be any number of places to hide, so I could potentially spend the night there. I couldn't help worrying about what was behind me. I couldn't spot Yua anywhere. But it wouldn't be strange if she appeared before me at this very moment, wearing an expression akin to that of a Noah mask. Or of a no mask. My instincts urged me onward. Run away. You have to run. I sank weakly to the ground of the overhead bridge by Miyashita Park. My throat was dry from too much running. I wanted to drink icy cold coke. But I didn't catch a or I didn't catch sight of any vending machines in the area. Would I be okay having come this far? No, don't get caught. Off guard, I still didn't neglect being wary of my surroundings. There'd be few people in Miyashita Park at night, was what I thought, but surprisingly it seemed that not that it seemed that such was not the case. Salary men walking hurriedly as they took shortcuts through the park, an old dude sitting on a bench and toying with his cell phone, several homeless people sitting down and zoning out, and the person in blue who was speaking with one of the homeless was a police officer. The police. You know what? I'm going to actually end this here and we'll make the decision next time. Though of course you guys already know what decision I'm going to make since I alternate between red and green, or at least I try to. But that's going to be it for this episode. As always, like for comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys next time. But until then, goodbye and farewell.